Hello and welcome to episode 74 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRLP. Joining me as always is the glorious League Freak. You can find on Twitter at League Freak. How are you doing there, mate? I'm angry. You're angry? Yeah, stupid people are saying stupid things. And we're about to destroy their stupid lives <laughs> so that they don't say stupid shit in the media ever again. All right, I'm... We've got to make sure we don't drop any C-bombs today. Yeah, because we don't want to give those cunts the satisfaction of <laughs> being able to say that, that we're rude. So, what's got what's got Freaky fired up? Well, it's this talk that uh, Golden Point could be axed in NRL Extra Time revamp. Now, it's not so much the fact that Golden Point could be axed, but it's more the um, options that have been put forward as a viable replacement. And... Yeah the people or the person, I dare say, who's entertaining these ideas. Mr. Graham, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, honestly. Mr. PowerPoint presentation, Mr. Undermine the Referees, Mr. I've got to, you know, show everybody that I'm here to justify my job, has now decided that after bringing in Golden Point, he wants to scrap it. This is a man whose uh, resume was uh, as a referee in the 90s and then what, boss of the Titans when they were financially in, in muck. Is that correct? Yeah, he took over the Titans when, they, when the NRL owned them, uh, left them in a really good place. And didn't he also run... Did he run for Parliament at some point? I feel as though he ran for Parliament. I don't know what Parliament. That's very possible. Let me yeah. just check. Let me just check the information machine. Yeah, I'm oh, the information machine. I'm sorry for tossing that up last second, but I feel <laughs> like he did. I feel like he ran for some seat. And yes, like... he, was, he was the Minister for Sport and Recreation in the O'Farrell state government. Ah, right. Um, the member for, member for Miranda. Miranda. I don't even know. Isn't that one of the chicks off Sex in the City? Maybe I, I <laughs> so, yeah. remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is off to a bit of a start. So there we go. Yeah, he's um, yeah, we've already spoken um in a few episodes already about how much we are opposed to his Monday morning presentations where he reveals all of the bad decisions and good decisions made by referees because that just plays into what the media wants from him. Because yeah. every time he explains, oh, they got a few wrong here, the media then goes, aha, we got you. See, the referees are shit. Now we're going to keep going at it and see if we can prove it again. Exactly. Um, like, he literally does a presentation undermining the referees. Yeah. It's completely nonsensical. Yeah. Absurd. It makes there's no logic to it whatsoever. It, it yeah. doesn't help the referees. It doesn't help the NRL. All it does is helps the um, crisis merchants sell more gear and it's frustrating as hell to watch. Yeah. I don't know what he thinks he's doing. That's doing something great for the game. It does nothing for the game other than hurt it. It's so, so stupid. It really is. Um, and he, it's produced by the NRL. And the weird thing is he wants to be doing it. Like he, he's up doing it. It's not like he leaves it to one of the many people that the NRL employ that, uh, a, you know, that's their job. They're, they're comms people. That's what they do. He's like, no, 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 I'll front this. I'll be the one that's got the the little mouse and pointer and all that and talking about why the referees are, are getting, like, this wrong and that wrong. It, it's unbelievable. And I don't understand why he does it. But, you know, I think that we're starting to see his name pop up more and more in the media, and I think he's just trying to justify his role at the NRL. I mean, shouldn't he his job just be to be completely anonymous? You know, make this whatever his job is, just make the decisions and shut up. I don't need to hear from him. Exactly. Tell you what, um, I will happily be the ref's boss next year. I'm I'm behind that. So, um, if the ref wants someone who's going to support them and is not going to undermine them publicly every week, uh huh. Um, and won't have any media presence whatsoever as far as the referees are concerned. I'm your man. Call me. Exactly. 
Um, <laughs> now, on to Golden Point. Yes. Um, in the Sydney Morning Herald today, Roy Masters has written about how Golden Point is being looked at. and Because there's uh, been some long-term problems with them. With yes. Golden Point games, long, long-term problems that have uh, really, really concerned people. So what uh, what Roy said here is uh, Golden Point could be abandoned by the start of the next NRL season or the scoring system in extra time radically revised as administrators come to terms with the games being effectively decided by a toss of a coin while the code is driving parity through strictly enforced salary caps, football department spending limits and shared stadiums. So, because the game is getting tighter, which is what they want, yep. they want to have results that aren't tighter. How about this? How about this, Andrew? You and me have joked that if it was up to the people running in the game, it would come down to a coin toss. Now they don't even want that much unpredictability yeah. well, in the results. The the funny thing is, which I wrote about in a, an article for The Raw recently, was um, if you get a situation where teams are equal on competition points and for points scored, points conceded, and tries tries scored, goal scored, all sorts of stuff, right? Everything's got complete parity. Then the latter position for those two teams isn't decided by a playoff or previous results. It's based on an actual coin toss. That yeah. is actually part of NRL rules, is that a coin toss will actually decide results at some stage, if it gets to it. Yeah. But now they don't want that either. No. And to be honest, I'm glad they don't want that, because that is stupid as well. Yeah, and but how about this too, is right? You Look at the NRL season this year, overall. How And you, you earn where you are on the ladder. And we were just talking about this 10 minutes ago, that it feels like this year... Really, so many teams have really earned where they are on the ladder, whether it be near the top or the bottom. Okay, and how have you ever remembered a season where the performances on the field were just forgotten completely? Because, well, where I am on the ladder is because of the referees, and it's because of the draw, and it's because of like you know. I miss out on Sunday lunch at my mum's house. Like, it's never about how you're playing the game anymore. It's always about, well, where where we are on the ladder because of golden point games. There's How about you just take responsibility for what you do on the football field? That's all gone out the window this year for some reason. Yeah, it is it is mad. It yeah. Really, it, it, I'm a, everyone's looking for an excuse for their own shortcomings. And if it's not the clubs themselves, it's morons in the media trying to drum up some sort of fabricated excuse. Mm -hmm. um, some of them so absurdly pathetic. I'm I'm surprised they weren't embarrassed to actually press, you know, publish on it. Like, um, let's see, what's one that comes to mind? Um, Paul Kent saying that the Jack DeBellin case is the reason why the Dragons have been crap for the last five years. I mean, sorry, this year. Yeah, <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, or, just, or how about the Panthers? It's it's not their soft pack. It's not their inconsistency. It's not giving away all their penalties. It's because some dude was filming a chick that he was banging earlier this year. That's yeah. that's what ruined their whole season. That's what it was all based on. And it's crazy considering that at various points of the year, both the Dragons and the Panthers were actually in the top eight. So. Could you argue then that they weren't impacted by the off-field incidents then? Like, why are they only impacted by these off-field incidents after the origin period and uh, not well, before what? it, closer yeah. to when the actual incident took place? <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, how about this? Why weren't the Panthers <laughs> impacted in it when they had that really long winning streak? Yeah. Yeah, It's and the Dragons too. I mean, they won four, you know, they lost their first two games, then won four straight to be sitting in fifth place on the ladder. Yeah. How are they not impacted then? No, nah, it, it's all because of coin tosses. We've got to remove coin tosses. Oh, my God. It's so stupid. I cannot believe that this stuff even gets entertained. Like, say you're running, say you're in the NRL, say you're working at the NRL, you're getting a decent amount of coin. Like, none of these people, like, earn minimum wage at, at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody comes up to you and says, listen, I've come up with some statistics that show that 
if we eliminated coin tosses, we could really make this league a lot more, a lot more even. Wouldn't you just say to them, grab all of your stuff, put it in a box, security will escort you out the building. You yes. fucking idiot. <laughs> so, um, NRL head of football, Gray Mattersley, has revealed Golden Point has been under serious discussion at League Central recently, and it will be reviewed by the competition committee in November. Can I just say, mm-hmm. when is it? When is something ever under casual discussion? It's always serious discussion. It's got serious. It's like, and what? What is the turnover point? Like, do you um, is you frown? Dis- you frown. You frown. And do you have to sit down for a serious discussion, or can you stand? Oh. Like, say you run into somebody at the water cooler, and you say, "Oh man, I wish Golden Point didn't exist." Eh? Oh. And it's like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> Well, well, might David be in the finals, and then you walk away. Is that that's obviously not a serious discussion? Well, but... it depends because it depends on the body language. Like if he's just sitting there with one arm casually on top of the the water cooler, then that's a casual discussion. Ooh, but if he's I sitting think... there seriously with hands on the hips, with the frown in place, and discussing it, to me that's a serious discussion. I see. I, I've got a I've got a thing here though. Right? Say you walk over to the water cooler, and it's Fonzie, and he's like, e. Let's but get rid of Golden but Point. Does, but does that's a serious, serious discussion. That's a serious have, discussion. I don't know. I don't know if Fonzie actually has serious discussions unless he goes into his office. No, nah, I think all of his discussions are serious. I really do. That's how you. That's how you slay it as much of as Fonzie did. What was his last name? Fonzie. Fonzie Rolf? I don't know. Um, uh-huh. We we will get to to the American later. Um, <laughs> Two results in round 24 have caused concern with long-term league watchers. The Eels were defeated in extra time last Friday without touching the ball. Mm. And the Broncos kicked a field goal. When the Broncos kicked a field goal, anyway. Two days later in Paul Gunn's final match, um, the Raiders kicked the one-pointer in extra time. Uh, when was that one? After about seven sets had been played. So the concern was about the game being decided very much too early. Yep. And, far t- and far too late. Yeah, yeah. We needed... Th- I mean, if they could just both uh, score in Golden Point after three sets, that would have been wonderful. Um, I love this idea that, like, we should have some sort of sympathy for the Eels, that they, they kick the ball off, they allow the Brisbane Broncos to march 90 metres up the field and slot a field goal, and for some reason the Eels should feel hard done by. It's like, how about you tackle them? Yeah. you got exactly. 90 you... metres. They, they've got a 90 metre buffer zone to start the game. We're then nowhere near the try line. That's a that's a pretty good start, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, so there's talk here that, that the golden point is a case of lottery and luck. Um, yeah, I don't know. Annesley said, the NRL has actually given this some thought recently and will further discuss Golden Point variations with the competition committee when it meets early November. Over the years, there have been a number of alternatives floated, such as Golden Try, which is stupid, stupid. minimum time periods, and even scrapping it all together. None of these have generated much traction. However, I do think both teams should get at least one possession each before a match is decided. Why? Look, I've said before, there's all of these ideas that come up to change Golden Point. Uh huh. And for the large part of them, they're all stupid and worse. Yes. The only option that you're going to have, if you want to change Golden Point, the only option you've got that's better than that is just have extra time. Mm-hmm. So if you want to have fair possession, you want to keep it as, as fair a contest as the 80 minutes before it, then you have extra time. So both teams have got an extra 10 minutes to do whatever they can to win the match. It doesn't matter who scores first. You've got 10 minutes. You can fight back and do what you need to. Yeah, That is the only viable option and alternative to Golden Point, if Golden Point has to be scrapped at all. Yeah. And, and like, at the end of that, you can get a draw. Like, at the end of Golden Point, exactly. you can get a draw. Exactly. But at least in Golden Point, it's like, if this if this occurs, the game's over. You know, if, if you allow your opposition team, and this is what people forget, if you allow the opposition to score a point, in Golden Point, why do you think that you deserve something? You don't. You let the opposition score this in a very, right. very this, quick amount of time, too. There's this mentality that both teams, does, you know, attack is the thing that matters. 
you know, we both deserve a chance to have a yeah. ch- have a crack at scoring and going. You create your own chance by being very good defensively and denying them an opportunity to actually score the point. Then you're exactly. in good field position to score yourself. I mean, you, you, can't you just, kick off. You can't just lie down and let them stroll up the field 90 metres and have a crack and go, oh, that's not fair. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you kick off and you put in one good set of defence, you're in a beautiful position to kick a field goal on at the end of your set. You know, you should be in a really good position. And, we're like, Pete, if the problem is that we look at the Parramatta Eels' failure and we think, wow, they deserve more. Man, we got some bigger problems than Golden Point in the game. Because if we're lining up everything on the Parramatta Eels' failure, geez, we're going to yeah. have to fix a whole lot of stuff in this game. Exactly. Um, so when they've gone through the data back to 2014, which is um, the last 50 Golden Point games. Mm-hmm. Five were won in the opening set. 10%. 10%. At an so average 10%. time of one minute. Nice. Which, um, I like to, I like to finish things within one minute because we've got other things we need to be doing. Very important things, yeah. Like like this. Um, yes. Ten games have been decided in two sets where both teams get a crack. Okay. okay. So two. So in their ideal world, where both teams get a crack at it, the game's going for one extra minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nine were decided in three sets, six in four, with only three drawn at the end of extra time. So let's see. He wants he wants a system whereby both teams get to touch the ball at least once. And the current golden point system, based on the last fifty uh, last fifty golden point games, has seen exactly that happen ninety percent of the time. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. Okay. The the chance of nobody scoring is 6%. The chance of a team going on their first set and scoring and winning is 10%. Like, is that really enough to change golden point? Like, if I said to you, if I said to you, you know what? 84% of the time, golden point works really well, but we got to scrap it, man. Wouldn't you just turn around and say, it works 84% of the time? That's pretty amazing. (laughs) Yeah, if everything was at 84% success, you'd be pretty happy. Yeah. But if your club's goal kicking was 84%, you'd be pretty Anything. happy, especially, especially if you're Cronulla. Um, Is yeah, there any... Can you think of another thing in rugby league that has an 84% rate of success? Like, obviously, clubs win and don't. Coaches win and don't. I mean, I think it, you might not even get that at, at state of origin level with Queensland winning all those years. I don't think they'll win it at 84%. No, no, no. Because most of the time uh, they won those series 2-1, so that's only 66% each year. Yeah, I mean, there might be, if you took certain chunks of the Australian test team, they'd probably be there. But, I mean, that's the only place I could think of where 84% was yeah. ever reached for a success rate. That's all right. It's, it's it's hardly worth any debate whatsoever. But here yeah. we are. Yeah. Um. So Annesley said, and this is this is going to be setting you up. This is okay. this is a walk down the garden path. Okay. Annesley said, I do think the NCAA college football over in the US model is quite a good option, as ensured both teams get at least one possession before the match is decided. The NCAA model is more equitable than the NFL system, which allows a team to score a touchdown on its opening drive and win. However, if it kicks a field goal, the opponent can tie the match with a field goal and the game continues until one team scores again. Why have we got to complicate things more than the current system that's in place? I would have thought that the reason why you want to change something is to make it less complicated and more inducive to creating the result you want, which is when you, a win or a loss. When you've got to pull out the abacus to explain something to someone, it's stupid, okay? You can explain to anybody. You, if, a, if a non-sport fan walks in the room and at, at the start of Golden Point and they say, what's happening here? And you say, you know what? First team score wins the game. They get it. You don't have to explain another thing. If you say, well... You know, the first team scores 
a, a point, then we restart the match. But then the other team can equal that. But then if another team scores after that, then they can win the game. It's like they, they've walked past. They're like, oh, I'm going, you know, I'm going to take a shit. Like anything else other than to sit down and watch this stupid convoluted system, you know? And the other thing is we're not playing gridiron. We've got a dynamic game, okay? Gridiron stops at the end of every single play. We're not gridiron. Can people stop trying to, like, look to gridiron for things that we should be doing? Because we're not fucking gridiron. We're rugby league, you know? And, like, oh, this is what they do in the NCAA. What do you mean where they don't pay the players? Maybe we should stop paying the players as well. Oh, maybe we should do what they're doing in the NFL. Really? I mean, have you ever sat down and watched an NFL overtime game? It is uh, just this convoluted crap. And they keep on looking over at the NFL like it's some shining light. It, let me tell you, it's not. I've been an NFL fan for a long, long time. Longer than most of the people that say, oh, I'm an NFL fan. It's not. It's not this wonderful bloody thing. I mean, you, you listen to the sports talk shows from the US about how terribly run they believe the NFL is. Yeah, it makes a lot of money because a lot of eyeballs are on it, but it is run like garbage. And we keep looking at it like it's some sort of example. I mean, can we please stop? We are not gridiron. We are rugby league. We have a very d- different dynamic in our sport. It's Unbelievable. A very different, it's a very different game. It's a like, different culture. It's a different game. It's a diff- It's different, completely different. It's... It's mindless. So we've got, you know sh- what? We have more in, in common with basketball, where it's also a dynamic sport, where you have an overtime period. They've got a lot more scoring, so that helps them. But I mean, they have triple overtime games in that. It, it's it, we're not a stop-start sport where you stop the game for thirty seconds to work out what you're going to do next. Exactly right, and the players go hammer and tongs for. You know, each half is probably close to 45 minutes with, with the odd stoppage in there. So it's about 40, 45 minutes or so per half. Then they have got 10 minutes in the middle and go again. It's it's non-stop action. You keep going. There's not this constant stopping, having a chance to have a breather and a drink and then go back out for one play and then go like off and the game doesn't take four hours to play. And, and you know, the, the thing is, you get the ball in overtime in the NFL, you do first play, stop, all you got 15 different coaches that are talking to the quarterback in his ear. It's like, now let's have a conversation about what we're going to do about the situation. That's not rugby league. It is so far from what happens in a rugby league match. Exactly right. And rugby league has always been mindful of the amount of time that's spent not playing the game. I mean, we've got shot clocks for scrums and dropouts, for Christ's sake. Yeah. We've had them for goal kicks. You know, it's... It's obvious that the game is very, very mindful on the amount of time is spent not playing the game. I mean, they've even made sure that the bunker decisions are made more quickly these days. Whether you like them or not doesn't matter. They yeah. are. They do happen much more quickly now than they used to. Remember when the bunker first came in that first year? Uh, they, were, they were lording over every decision and every little move and every frame. And yeah. some decisions were taking five, six minutes. Now you're going to get a response, uh, you know, an answer. Within a minute. You, you know what the thing about the NFL is with these people? They see the money and yeah. they see shinies. They see lots of shiny stuff. You know, oh, it's all shiny and stuff. And they think, oh, better. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. You know, we no. we would, if they were running around saying, you know what, this is how Rugby Union do it, I wouldn't be saying any of this stuff because we're so close to Rugby Union, right? But they're not. They're taking a sport that, is so completely different to what we have in every single way that like the only difference is their ball is a similar shape to us. And even then it's very, very different. It's so different to rugby league. It really, really is. And I just can't believe that we keep going back to this stupid premise that we should go and have a look at how the NFL does things because it is run like crap. It really is run like crap, and it's not run for to make the game look better. It is just ah, oh, I can't, I just can't believe that we keep getting back to this bloody same talking point 
from the same idiots. You know, when he, yeah. he's bringing up college football, they don't pay their players. <laughs> like, why is he looking at college? Oh. Well, they've, they've got uh, someone outside the NRL to come in with an idea based on a hybrid version of the NCAA and NFL's options here. That, they, that a, even Gridiron doesn't use. Yeah. Yeah. As a, and trying to mold it into a system that the NRL could use in extra time. And I'll just I'll just say the quotes, okay? Okay. The ball would be placed twenty meters twenty meters from the try line, with possession going to the team which won the coin toss at the beginning of the match, or having a second coin toss to determine who receives first use of the ball. The team in possession will be given one set of six tackles to score. If they score a try, they will be given the opportunity to convert it. The opponent would then be given the ball and restart play twenty meters from their from their try line. The same scoring options would apply. The team with the second position would be given the opportunity to tie or win the game or not score at all. If the game is tied by the second team scoring the same number of points, the process will be repeated two more times. At this point, the NRL needs to decide how desperately they want to not have a drawn game. And that is the... As much as the, the stuff I just read out is crazy, um, that next line, he says, is the crux of the matter. At this point, the NRL needs to decide how desperately they want to not have a drawn game. If they are so adamant that the game has to have a win, a winner and a loser, then you are going to get to the situation where you need to come up with some crazy rule. And I don't know why having a winner and a loser is so vitally important, especially when, what are we talking, 84? 84, 94% of the time, we get a winner or loser anyway. Uh, yeah, like, uh, what what was it? It was, uh, well, yeah, it was 94% of the time. Yeah. We get a winner and a loser, um, you know, and, and that, that system, I mean, Jesus, just go away. Just, just whoever come up with that it's system. It's, it's convoluted, okay, and the main reason why it's convoluted, mad it's stupid. is because, A, it's practically a different game. You're compl- you're playing a completely different game there. Yeah, that's not rugby league. That has never been rugby league. What are you talking about? I don't know who wrote that, right? But just go away. Yeah, it's stop wasting my time with your convoluted shit. It is madness. Um. Oh boy. Now, now that that's a good first half of the episode done. Yeah, these we, people, these people are stupid, man. I can't believe how stupid people in rugby league are. And Graham, honestly, like right now, he's earning money to do really important stuff in the game, and he's sitting down talking about how they do things in gridiron. Ah, oh, I wish he was running the Titans into the ground again. Don't mind me, just enjoying some popcorn and some drink. Oh, nice. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, Whatever you get when you whatever you listen to someone have a rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I just can't I can't stand them. Right. I can't well, stand in, any of them. That's a good segue that because you were talking about idiots and stupid people. Yeah. Um. Paul Crawley. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Seamless. Mm. Paul Crawley has handed out his yearly report cards for clubs, despite the fact the school hasn't finished yet for the year. Yeah, well, I like to give out my report cards any time, you know, before the final exams are finished. That's, That's great, right. Paul. What did you want to get in? Where wow, you're so smart getting in before everyone else. <laughs> Why isn't everyone else doing this, Paul? That's, That's one of the few times that he's got in and done something before Buzz did it for him. I mean, someone should have said, listen, Fran, pump the brakes, all right? Just wait another week at least. <laughs> Just hold your horse. Just wait till Sunday, Arvo, at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shall we go through this, his report card? Let's do it. Why not? We've had so much external stupid shit to talk about already in this episode. Let's just, let's run this stuff into the ground. <laughs> oh, man. Let's read it out with a laugh. Yeah. Okay. Raiders, grade A+. plus. I agree um, with that. The Raiders yeah. are not going to achieve anything this year. They'll run around talking about how they're a nice bunch of blokes and losing the finals. It feels very Raider-esque. A plus from me. 
Um, I'd say they've been. I'd say they've been an A. Really? Yeah, I'm a hard judge. But they're such nice blokes, Andrew. What are you talking about? Well, this is all right. They're wonderful blokes. Have you seen that, that they're really nice blokes? They've got great big personalities. I know yeah. that because people keep saying that. I wonder how good a bloke Jack Whiten was when that's anyway. Um, <laughs> Manly, he's got them second with an A-plus as well. And I'd give them a B-plus. Yeah, I, I don't know how you give Manly A+. plus. I, I don't know how you get there. Um, I, if I drunk hard enough, I probably could get there, but I'm not. Yeah, I mean, yes, they've they've achieved better than they a lot of people thought they would. Yep. With basically the same squad. Yep. But it's still a fairly decent squad. Um, and we can't be sitting there and saying that they've overachieved based on their performances under Trent Bloody Barrett. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the millstone. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Handbrake. Mr. Handbrake. You know, he, I wonder... I wonder. I mean, he's, a good, he's a good-looking handbrake, but he's a handbrake nonetheless. Exactly. Mr. Bunnings Chairs. <laughs> um... Do you, know, he, do you know who was responsible for them getting a $30 million facility at Narrabeen, Trent Barrett? Wonderful man. Just ask him. Did you know Trent Barrett is the reason why property prices are so high in Manly? Yeah. Because yeah. he actually he actually built that, that beach there. He actually walked around and said, why don't people just pay more money? And yeah. people were like, oh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> he built the entire beach at at, uh, at Manly, around that whole North Shore, just, just from stuff that he found at Bunnings. He hand-placed every grain of sand himself. Do you know, he actually went to Bunnings and he said, listen, I'm going to need 20 trillion tons of sand, uh, some uh, rocks, and 57,000 chairs. Oh, and have you got any seagulls as well? I'm going to need some seagulls. And I'd yeah. like a I'd like a water feature about the size of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can yeah. we get that? Can we do that in salt water as well? Because you know I don't want to have to use a a big filter. That's that's right. Because that, that would be expensive. Yeah, yeah. We don't want the filter. Don't worry about that. No. Um, yeah. Oh, and also oh, every every six months or so, I want to dump my septic tank into it, so no one can swim there. Oh, <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, he's got he's got Melbourne third with A plus, and I don't know how you can have the team that's currently on top of the ladder as the third best team on your rankings. Well, I, you know how you do it, right? What you do is you get you know the uh, you know the wine bottle opener, right? And mm-hmm. you put it you put it in your nose, all right. And you know the ones where you grip it like with your fist, right? And then you just slam your head down onto it. And right. if you do that for four or five minutes, you're going to make a mess. But if you do that for four or five minutes, you you sort of go like, Melman the third. That's a fair point. I I I I see the errors of my way. Um. Which would explain. I don't need to go into much more commentary there on the next yeah. one because he's got the Roosters at fourth with A plus, despite the fact that he tipped them mid season to finish first, and they're currently sitting second, and they're the yeah. minor pre- and they're current defending premiers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's well, yeah. He's, not he's got everyone. Ranks, he's got them ranked lower than than Canberra and Manly. But Andrew, not everyone can be perfect, even though we gave them a perfect score. Fifth, Parramatta with an A. Wow. Now, they're currently sitting six on the ladder, and he said mid-season that they would be 12th, and he's giving I, them an A. They've yeah, got see, Brad I, Arthur as coach. I feel as though this list is so, so stupid that he's given them an A for AFIT. <laughs> um, it's like quote. A-League. Hang on, there's, there's a quote here, mate. You're going to want to hear this okay. one. I rate Brad Arthur up there with Ricky Stewart and Des Hasler in the shootout for Daly M Coach of the Year. He came into this season under huge pressure to keep his job, as did more than half his squad. 
there's a reason why he was under huge pressure to keep his job because he took a team that was in the finals to the wooden spoon. He yes. did that. Yes. And, and like he came into pressure and they re-signed him after one of the worst losses in the club's entire history. Like, is that really pressure? Right. There's more, like he there's... literally walked in after one of the worst losses in the club's entire terrible history. And they re-signed him. How much pressure was really on him? Exactly. There's, there's more coming. Oh, man. That's what she said. <laughs> Mitchell Moses Fond deserves credit for the way he's knuckled down to get his career back on track. That's fine. I understand that. I accept that. However, he said, it won't shock me if Moses is challenging Nathan Cleary for the New South Wales number seven jumper next year. You're sitting down because there's more. Are you serious? There's more. There's more. I'm tense already. <laughs> Clint Gutherson has also shown why he's worth every cent of his seven hundred thousand dollars a season contract. No way. <laughs> the management the podcast. Hang on. Oh, Hang on. Oh. That, management... that management made him beg for. Oh. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> oh, I love Crawley. Seriously. Uh, oh. Cool, cool. Okay, now we we need to discuss something. <laughs> we, right. we need to unpack this. We There's need a to lot have going on here. Is he is he is he just trolling? Is Paul Crawley just wow. trolling everyone? Like, is he a dude that he's like, listen, I'm sweet with my job. Okay, let's see how far I can push this shit. Like, is he really actually a, a really he's sharp as attack? Smart dude, knows the game inside out, and he's just got to a point in his life where he's like, man, I can write anything. Watch. <laughs> um, it's got to be in play. It has to be in play. Yeah. I'm just looking at the words going, I can't believe they've been put in that order. Yeah. I was like, just I, challenging I, I cannot... Nathan Cleary for the New South Wales number seven jumper next year. Yeah. How? Yeah. Like, he, he wasn't even brought in as the 18th man to replace a half who was under an injury cloud. They brought in his teammate and and fullback for that duty. Yeah. He can't even get... Anyway. Um, <laughs> Gutherson has also shown why he's worth every cent of his $700,000 season contract that management made him beg for. What? <laughs> No one else was offering him money. No one else offered Clint Gutherson money to play football. No one. The only way you can say management made him beg for that is if he was on more than $700,000 a season prior to that, and that wasn't the case. How How do you beg for an upgrade on your current deal when no one else is interested in signing you? How How is that begging and the night before, he said, yeah, I've got no other offers. And they yeah. re-signed to this giant deal. Like, I'm pretty sure the club that promotes this reserve grader as the king is not making him beg for anything. He's their club captain. Uh, like, wow. far out. That was, that was, uh, that was some crawly, crawly gold right there. That really is. I think that I think he knows what he's doing. I've changed my mind on Paul Crawley. I think he's brilliant. I think he's like in the break the Nasta thing. I was Braith just about Nasta, to say that. I was yeah. just about to say that. I think like and I love Braith the Nasta. I really do. I, I think Braith the Nasta says, Man, I get to call footy for a living and I can say whatever I want. Watch this. Like I can't say the same thing for Mark Gasney, because Mark Gasney says some stuff that you're like ding dong but well, he Braith also says he also says beautiful a lot too. Yeah, I wonder what we say a lot that we don't realize. I know I say yeah every thirty seven seconds. Um, there's um, got to be something. I say I'm a lot. Do you? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Bulldogs is giving them a B plus. I think they're in six on this thing. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's uh, they've they've had a good run at the end of the year. Mm. But given the squad they've got and what they're dealing with, what they're going through, I give them a respectable D plus, C minus, somewhere around there. And where they are on the ladder as well. Yeah, that's pretty they, phenomenal. 
Yeah, how can you give a team B when they're that far down the ladder? How's this? In fact, I'm starting to think Pay will be coaching Canterbury for some years to come, given the way he has rediscovered the famous Dogs of War spirit. Oh. I never thought, we, and we said this at the start of the year, we never thought that Pay should be losing his job anyway. Never. No. Nah. No. Nah. And, and here's the thing. It's like they just bring out the same crap, the Dogs of War. They, they call them the entertainers as soon as they score more than 12 points. Yeah. It's like, can you people just shut up? Get a new line. You know, stop get using, something new. Stop That's using lines from the 80s and 70s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, next. He's I'm, got... so, I'm so disappointed in everyone in this episode. Hey, like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. He's got, um, he's got the Rabbitohs next with a B plus, And... I don't know. I think after 11 rounds, they'd won 10 games and had one loss. Very good record at that point. Since then, they've had five wins and seven losses. Terrible record at that point. I don't, um, know, how, I don't know how you give that a B plus. I'm giving. I'll give them a steady, solid C. Well, not only that. You, if if these lists were done actually watching games and not just looking at their ladder, right? You would look at the Carabdo season and say, okay, so their uh, representative fullback and captain retires very early in the season. And then they they go on a bit of a run and then Cody Walker comes back from origin and is just uh, just horrible, really, really bad. And then they get lots of suspensions for foul play and stuff. One of their forwards, like, eye gouges Robbie No, Farrell. no, no. They were, they were Melbourne Storm players. Oh, that's right. He was saying that they were Storm tactics. I forgot about that. They were all well, Storm then, players. Well, then the Melbourne Storm, Sam Burgess, comes back from an injury yeah. and uh, straight away almost kills Matt Moylan. And, yeah. yeah How Mel- Melbourne Storm's George that? Burgess tries to rip out Robbie Farah's eye. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and that's a B. And uh, Melbourne Storm's um, James Roberts for some reason, threw an elbow at Corey Oates while he's on the yeah. ground, unable to defend That's himself. Dead. Yeah, yeah. Grubs. Storm yeah. grubs. Um, Tigers, B+. Plus. And... <laughs> well, you're a Tigers fan, All right? Tell I'm me... Giving, I'm not giving B+, plus. no. Okay. Not, no. Um... What if they got ninth place? Would you give them an A+, plus because that's what you <laughs> I don't think you give someone an A plus for doing what they're expected to do. <laughs> I, think, I think an A plus is for people who go above and beyond expectation. I agree with you. There's sometimes I'll be like, "Nah, you're expected to do that. That's a C." But uh, that other little thing you did that was an A plus. That one. Right now, okay. The Tigers finished in 2018 with 12 wins, 12 losses in ninth place. Yes. Right now, they have 11 wins, 12 places, are sitting in ninth place. Yes. Um, I'd give them a C, maybe a C plus, probably yep. a C. That's somewhere okay. there. Yeah, that seems... I mean, the, the to, if there was ever a team that was a C in the NRL, like a lock it in, how do we rate everybody else... You'd be like, well, the Tigers are the ninth place C, okay? And you just work your bat way backwards and forwards from there. Yeah, that's I, that's pretty much one of the most easiest ratings to give any side. You can lock e- in the Tigers with a C at the start of most seasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, he does have a great line here, though. Okay. This Sunday is shining up, shaping up to be one of the most memorable afternoons for at Leichhardt Oval since probably going all the way back to those... Ignore the the bad word usage there. Okay. Um, going all the way back to those great Balmain days of Blocker, Junior, Benny, Ciro, and Gary Jack, five Australian Test players. How many times do you think either the Magpies, the Balmain Tigers, or the West Tigers have had five Australian Test players in their side at the same time since then? Let me think. Did Darren Santa play for Australia? No. Um, was Terry Hill playing for Australia? No, he wasn't. John Hopewadi, he wasn't by then. Um, but Ryan didn't play for them. Uh, Wilson, no. 
Heckenberg, no. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. This, Am I missing someone? This could go on for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like, I feel like he's probably pointed out something really obvious. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't know anything. Um, now, there's a good little last line here. He says, Clear his decision to walk out, cut deep with many fans, but sometimes things work out for the best. The person that cut the most, Clear's decision to leave the Tigers, mm-hmm. was Paul Crawley. Because Crawley wouldn't get an, couldn't get an answer out of him. He kept asking him all the time, well, yeah. why'd you turn your back on the Tigers? Why are you leaving the club? And Ivan Cleary said, I've answered that question. <laughs> and I said today that we're moving on. And yeah. I'm not going to be answering any more questions about that. Yeah. And then he kept asking him questions about it, and yeah. Ivan refused to answer him. Wouldn't even yeah. wouldn't even look at him. Yeah, that's the person who's cut most about Ivan Cleary leaving the club. Yeah, not even Tigers fans are cut as much as Paul Crawley is about the fact that Ivan Cleary left the club. And I and Crawley's not cut because he because he left. Crawley's cut because he stopped talking to him. Yeah, which I to mean, the point geez. to the point that Cleary now will talk to Paul Kent ahead of Paul Crawley. Yeah, wow. But even made a special know, trip into leagues. Well, was into the Fox League headquarters to have a, a really intense. Oh, how boring was it? <laughs> yeah, so boring. It's like, oh, oh, geez. I mean, between Paul Kent's bubbly personality and uh, his uh, I've been clear he's Cleary, um, he's just an extrovert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just the most boring shit. Like I got to the end of it. And was just like, I can't believe I sat through that. It was I felt bad for myself. That that interview showed too that Paul Kent doesn't really like asking hard questions on air. Yeah. He, he just likes to talk about the ones that he makes when there's no one there to actually give the answer to be in the same room as him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I asked him this really tough question. I put him on the spot. And you actually yeah. put Paul Kent on the spot to do it. He's like, so how do you think you're going to go this year? Yeah. <laughs> Cutting stuff, Paul. That um, was great. And, and like Ivan Clear, he's like, yeah, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's given the Broncos a C minus. Okay, I, I'm I'm kind of all the way there. I yeah, think close. Well, look, if they 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 could miss the finals, mm-hmm. and that's that's your C area, you know. Um, and also, they've got a coach that's a massive drama queen and uh, hasn't really proven himself ever. So there's that as well. Yeah. Um, he's then given... He's rated the Sharks next with a C- minus as well. And I think that's probably a bit harsh. I'd probably give the Sharks yeah. a, a C+. Plus. Yeah. Lots of injuries. They had to deal with their coach being banned for life <laughs> earlier this year. Life with um, quotation marks. Oh yeah, life. You know, he'll be back and he'll be back in two weeks' time. Um, yeah, very strange one that one. Put on here. It would break John Morris's heart. The Cronulla has lost five games despite scoring more tries than their opposition. It just shows the value of having a decent goal kicker. Although with Sean Johnson, Chad Townsend, and Cole Fleming to choose from, you'd think the Sharks could get it right. It would have catapulted them from eighth. On 24 commentary points into second spot. No. See, no. Because I've done the numbers. They would yeah. have got to fourth. Yeah. I, I, if you want I'm to use cool. the weird metric that Fox Sports came up with after my metric where no one kicks goals at all, then they would have been third. I don't know how he gets second. Yeah. Oh, man. That's so funny what Fox Sports did, hey? I still can't get over that. They I like the fact concept. that they were trying. Well, they, 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 I did this thing where, okay, I wanted to sort of in a novelty manner, mm. show the value of goal kicking as a means of showing how much it's cost the Sharks this year. And yeah. I use the nonsense metric that what if every team kicked every goal in a season, which is never going to happen. But okay, that's, that's a natural That's a natural uh, thought progression. Like imagine yeah. if they kicked all their goals. That's a natural thought progression. When you want to show the value of goal kicking, that is the natural progression you take. Yes. Fox Sports decided that if we want to show how important goal kicking is, we're going to do a ladder where no goal kicking is included whatsoever. Which isn't natural. That No one's saying, imagine if goal kicks didn't exist. It's like, this is how important goal kicking is. And we're yeah. going to show you by not having any goals included whatsoever. 
Yeah. Which just brought in a ton of draws. Because it's yes. just, how many times do you think two teams have scored the same number of tries in a game, but they scored different number of goals? Yeah. A lot. It was rightfully panned for ripping content. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, social media, for calling out that. Yeah, it was um, pretty cool. Uh, that, that was pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, as a little tangent. Um, he's tipped the Tigers to cause an upset this weekend. Okay. Thanks, Paul. That means the Sharks have won. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah what are you going to be doing in two weeks' time? What, what were you... <laughs> Because obviously when the season ends for our teams, we go on holidays, hey? Well, Mad Monday. Oh, what are we going to do for Mad? Let's have a Mad Monday. We're going we're gonna to well, we, we're gonna have a Mad Monday podcast okay. episode. Okay, all right. Okay. So that's, that's, that's another discussion. We're Let's get through this, this, this lineup here. So he's, after, after the Sharks, he's, uh, after the Tigers, he's got the Knights with a D. And I'd say the Knights deserve a probably an E+. Plus. Yeah. I don't know how he gives them a D. Furthermore, uh, he tipped the mid-season to finish fifth. <laughs> <laughs> That's someone as bad as James. James Hooper's fourth. Um, yeah. The, look, the Knights are exactly where I expected them to be. I didn't expect them to be above the Panthers, but in terms of where they are on the ladder, it's like, yeah, that's about where the Knights are yeah. as a well, team. I, I, I rate them heavily down because for most of the year okay they've they've been in the fight in a lot of games yeah but, but when it come down to the crunch and they still had a finals opportunity on the line they caved badly and very very childish like they pierced and it very well put i don't need any more than that uh <laughs> cowboys next with a d minus and sorry that's that's another e yeah, that, that really is. Um, What's changed in that squad since they made that grand final from eighth? Very I little. Th- well, they've lost Thurston, obviously, but... No, I no, know, but he, you know when he they was, made that grand final, yeah, he was gone, yeah. as was Scott. He was out of that side all year. They were both out with injuries, and they made That's, the grand final. They lost their fullback, though, to a brain bleed, um, which is pretty scary. But you've got to argue, though, Scott Drinkwater was a pretty good replacement. Very, very good replacement. Um, not like he was a step down in any way. Cohen Hess has turned into garbage. Cohen Hess is a Queensland Cup player now. Can we both agree on that? He has really gone backwards. Yeah. And he's like, he, hasn't, he hasn't gone stationary. He's gone backwards. Yeah, he's a poor man's Dane Carlor at this point. Ooh. He'll be playing for he'll be playing for Salford like in two years' time. And they'll be like, oh, have you seen him? Ah, and then he'll just chuck up a duck egg. Yeah. Now, he's then given the Warriors a D minus. Oh, yeah, I'll give them, I'll give them an F. They're just an F. Oh, I'll be, I'll be generous. I'll give them an E minus. You could give them. Uh, they like have a, been. What would be like an NR, not rated or something? Like just. Oh, we're getting to that. <laughs> okay. okay. Look, the Warriors have no excuses for being poor in any year. They should be like the Broncos. You know, they should always be in the eight. They've got an entire yep. country of talent to pick from. Yep. In every single position. And every team has Kiwis and Islanders in it. Yeah. And world-class ones. Mm-hmm. There's no excuse for that team not to be there. And the reason why they're not is... I'd say, let's say, 99% of the reason why they're not is because of the coach. Yeah, and uh, stupid decisions by management as well. I mean, yeah. whoever brought in Nikarima, I'd just like to ask why? why, why? Like, why? Bring him in is one thing. Constantly putting ahead of um, Tavita Harris, who has shown to be so much better. Yeah, amazing. Like a really, really good young player. It's, it's not often you see a good young player and you're like, man, he just, he goes after it. He tries things and stuff. And they they have screwed him around so bad. I so hope he goes to another club. He deserves to get a chance. It's, and look, there will be people, especially a lot of Warriors fans, who will rightfully say that the Warriors have copped probably 
more than their fair share of bad of bad calls from officials and stuff during the game this year. It's going to happen to every team along the way. One team's going to just cop it worse than others. Just this year, just as unfortunately, is the Warriors year for it. Um, but you can't you can't hang your hat on that. No, they they have not been playing good enough all year, and playing really stupid football. Yeah, like, there's a lot of bad structure, some woeful last tackle options. Ugh. Uh, if it's not just bomb for the corner, it's give it to Roger and see what he can do. And I'm sorry, but teams who are playing two one-dimensional in a in attack like that, the Dragons are the other one who are just as bad, or they're worse. Um, you're so easy to defend against. You just you just mark the kicker heavily, and, yeah, and that's pretty much know, it. They lost in in this season where they've been so catastrophically bad in every area of the game. To see what RTS can do every single week in such a terrible team, it's absolutely incredible. He is just, he's, he's unbelievable. Like, and he's still only a young, young bloke. Like he's not like 21 or nothing, but he could be doing this for many, many more years to come. And he's really being wasted there at the Warriors, unfortunately. Um, because every single game you see him do something that he has zero right to do, and he does it with basically no help at all. Yeah. It'd be like, say you got, I mean, if you swapped between him and Tedesco, you just swap teams that are on. I think Tedesco doesn't do anywhere near as good as what RTS is. And they're different players, granted, right? And they've got different strengths and weaknesses. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, like, I don't think you could just drop anyone in that position and they'd still be doing the sort of stuff he's doing. I just think he's showing what an incredible player he is. Like, I love watching him play. It's just a shame you have to watch the Warriors play when you watch him play. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... They've got to do a lot of changes to their roster, but I think the first thing they need to do more than anything is get a proper coach there. Yeah. Get a rid genuine of him. proper coach. This is the thing with Stephen Kearney, okay, is yeah. you hear so many people in the media talk about, you know, oh, you know, he, he was an assistant under, under Bellamy, and that's just going to automatically lead to success. Kearney says, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> He's from that. He's from that Bellamy camp, and it's like, yeah, you, you know. can only dine out on that for so long, and yeah. he's been dining out on it for three years too long. Yeah, definitely. Warriors, do your club a favor, do rugby league a favor, get rid of him, get a proper coach, and not Sean Bloody Wayne. Oh, they're gonna do it. You know they're gonna do it. Don't do it. They're gonna you do it. I would love to see because I think every time we've seen the Warriors good and they're in the finals. Yeah. I think that's they've been one of the best teams to watch. Yeah. When they're winning and they're playing good football, they are great to watch. Also, when they're on, Melbourne Storm is not happy. No. Like when they're playing well, the Storm is like, damn, the Warriors. That's the thing. And But when the Warriors are not playing good football, it is oh. the worst possible chore to sit through watching them play. Oh. I'd hate to be a Warriors fan watching their team play when they're not winning because they are hard to watch. I don't know if it's that I I want the Warriors to go well or not, right? I, I don't know if it's that, but the Warriors are the only team outside of Penrith that I can find myself standing up and yelling at the TV in frustration at some of the stuff they do. And it can be like, it might be three minutes into the game when they're on their own line. Like, that's how bad it is. It's not like it's always, like, right near the end where they have a chance to win. They can do some of the most stupid stuff you've ever seen on a football field, uh, like, in the first minute. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're so infuriating to watch. Um, but when they get it right, just phenomenal to watch. Yeah. Um, next one, Penrith. An E he's given them. Ooh, an E. Um, I'd probably agree with the E, actually. I'm trying but to think. Uh, he's, he's, got a so lovely, he's got a lovely rant about Ivan, though, because you know he's had his running with him. The, he's a journalist, though. He's got integrity and stuff, and he wouldn't make stuff personal. Well, here we go. Okay. okay. This, is, this is the 
um, jilted lovers comment here. <laughs> it's like the breakup. So dude used to have on Twitter with me when they'd say, "I'm unfollowing you, Lee Freak," because and it's like, dude, just unfollow me. We're not <laughs> we're not together. All right, just chill. <laughs> all right. He starts with, "Let's get this right." So okay. Jil- I told you, jilted. Yeah. You sack Ivan Cleary to bring in Anthony Griffin, who has you sitting equal fourth when he was sacked. So you pay out Griffin and bring back Cleary before getting rid of Phil Gould so Cleary can seemingly start a new rebuild because he's obviously not sold on the roster Gus spent eight years building. Use a comma! (laughs) There wasn't one comma in there. No. Wow. As I said, jilted. Um, And after all that, you missed the finals when most were thinking anything but a grand final would be a fail. Well, that's pretty... I mean, even the most optimistic person wouldn't say that, I don't think. Seriously, wouldn't you love to work for a joint throwing money around like the Panthers? It was again highlighted by a decision to bring back Appy Coruscant despite already having an extremely gifted dummy half in Wade Egan they'd spent years developing. Sometimes, when you develop a player, it doesn't work as quickly as you like. Yeah, and they don't turn out to be what you need. Sometimes you need someone that's quick out of dummy half that can, you know, do a few things in the middle of the field. And that's not to say that Egan can't be doing that. He's probably just another year or two away from that. And sometimes you need to have a new person to come along to sort of help guide them a little. Yeah. And I I remember when uh, we won the title in 2003 and there was some dummy half. I can't remember what we did at dummy half. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We brought somebody in that was a good dummy half. Because we needed that immediately. It helps. I mean, let's have a look at some other teams that have been quite successful and have a look at their hookers. And you go, Cameron Smith, pretty good out of dummy half. Yeah. Uh, Damien Cook, I mean, he used to be a beach sprint champion, you know. He's pretty good out of dummy half. Hang on, what? Yeah. What do you mean he used to be a beach? Well, I'm an historian, mate. I've got to research his stuff. Yeah, Damien Cook. From South. From South, yeah. Beach sprint Have you not seen, mate? He's fast. No way. He's a beach sprint. He was? He was Was, a beach sprint champion. Yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. Fantastic stuff. Wow. Was, um, you're a real yeah. historian. Oh, mate, you, you got to you got to do your research. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, now we're down to the last two. Okay. Titans F. Yeah. Um, Easy. No, the the Titans get a Y minus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a terrible season. Like, wow, I wonder if the Titans in the... Let's keep to the NRL era. They've got to have had one of the worst seasons in the NRL era, right? Well, that's there along with um, the Western Suburbs Magpies in 98-99. Oh, with, hang on. Were they still in the NRL, the West Magpies? Yeah, yeah, because the West Tigers started in 2000. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Okay. The, the Magpies are 98-99, and Newcastle, in the first two years, they got those wooden spoons. Oh, well, actually, oh, in the yeah. third year, why not? Those yeah. are probably the worst seasons in the NRL. And this Titan side, the difference between the Knights side and the Magpie side is that those sides had next to no talented players in their side. Yeah. And they busted their backside, even though they knew they were probably going to lose anyway. Yeah, they were just they they literally weren't good enough. Like just yeah. a talent vacuum. That's what it was. Well, I mean, we could probably just off the top of our heads name probably eight players in the Titans side that if you hadn't watched their football this year, you'd say, well, "Yeah, I'll, I'll have him in my team." Yeah, the Titans are completely different. They've got a a very very good squad for an NRL team, and yeah. they they've not bothered. No. Like then I'm not saying they're not putting in. Obviously they are. They turn up, they do tackles and stuff like that. They're not getting smacked, you know, ninety nil or anything like that. But their heads aren't in the game and haven't been all year. Mm. And yeah. it's been proven that it wasn't entirely the coach either because they got rid of him and they've been playing worse. Way and you know what? Way worse. Yeah. Which is the weird thing for me. And Which makes you wonder how good that review was that Mal Meninga was doing. Well, that's – and we, we did the, an episode about this. It's like if you bring in Mal Meninga and you say, listen, Mal, we need you to – and they brought him in really early in the year, which was kind of weird. But um, you say to Mal Meninga, Mal, we need you to come in and do a review of the club and give us some recommendations. And he does that and he follows his recommendations and the club gets 
way, way, way worse. You gotta say, man, I'll leave saying work and power. Yeah. Yeah. And his review, I mean, why would you bring a rookie coach into that team the way it is? Yeah, that's that, a really bad idea. They did that with the last coach. Yeah. Garth, exactly. Garth Brennan. And look how that worked out. Yeah. I don't see how they think doing it again is going to make things better. No. Every time the Gold Coast Seagulls, Chargers, whatever they want, and the Titans brought in a rookie coach, other than Phil Economides, God, the legend. You, I was going to say him. Other than Phil Economides, yeah. it's been an abject failure. Yeah. Abject failure. They should bring um, Phil Economides back. Can you imagine still, if he comes back like Vince McMahon when he walks down the thing? And he's just like, we're bringing it all back. Captain Charger comes down as his tag team partner. Ah, oh, <laughs> it'd be the best. He's still coaching over in uh, in Serbia, I believe. So yeah, yeah. they could bring him back. Yeah, he's one of Serbia's finest coaches, I hear. Yep. And last but not least, the Dragons. And he's given them an F. And I'm sorry, that's way too high. They get a Z minus. I feel as though... There's probably some sort of alphabet that they have in Wales in the Welsh language <laughs> that has like 77 letters in it. And I feel as though whatever the last one of that is, it's that minus. should be. Yeah, yeah. And minus, yeah. <laughs> minus. <laughs> It'll be like, it's a, it's like we've got ABC and their last letter is like, you, you say the word for 15 minutes and then it's minus on the end of that. Exactly. Um. So, Paul Kent came out with an article this, yeah. Oh, today. come on. You're killing me now. There's too much in and this episode where it's like, man, what is wrong with these people? I know. But the fact that he said that the Bellin's court case and that drama is the reason why the Dragons have been crap, okay? I then argue that Dragon squad has been one of the top squads since, what, 2016? Yeah, they've had some talent. It's been a good squad for three, four years. At one point, I felt as though um, Widdop was the best player in the world. Not for yeah. very long, but for a while there, it was like, man, Widdop is killing it. Yeah. When you consider that since Paul McGregor's been there, he has not got that team higher than seventh. Yeah, but it was a plucky seventh. Yeah, and a plucky eighth. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Every year he's been there, he's got worse. And yeah, and his squad fact, might have actually got better during that time. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. He hasn't got an aging squad. He's got a squad that are in the peak of their careers. With James Graham, the only exception, but I mean a lot of prop forwards tend to Would be they... better in their thirties. And he's not. He's not crap. His forward pack it should be murderers row. It should be like like Frizzell, Sims. What's the big fella up front? What's his name again? Vaughn. Um, Vaughn, who I think is he might be the best prop forward in the world. Like it should just be a murderer's row. No team should be thinking, oh, man. like they're the opposite of the Panthers pack where you go to sleep the night before and you just snuggle up in bed and you like have nice dreams and stuff. When you face the, the Dragons, you should have a sleepless night. And, yeah, it, it's not talent. So thanks there to Paul Crawley with his magnificent review of the uh, the year that hasn't yet finished. Um, we found that he's mostly wrong. That's no surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess I guess that leads us into the, the tail end of the episode. So we um, yep. did do a few shout-outs. So obviously we'll yeah. get people to get in there to uh, listen to The Starting Block. They had a good episode last night. You can find them on Twitter, at The Starting Block. Drop the K on the end. Drop the K, um, as always. And Boogie Bumper. Yeah, he's got his daily show. He's uh, going through that. I've seen that on daily, funnily enough. Um, so go and visit Boogie Bumper. Um, Nadine. Well, I was thinking the other night, we should get Nadine back on pretty soon, eh? Yeah, we need to get some more of the staff involved. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, with the amount of work that uh, Richard Cranium's doing at the moment, I think he needs a promotion from Kneecapper to head of PR and sales. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he was it's trying just... to get he was trying to get Donald Trump to uh, get invested in us. 
Yeah, and I mean, it, it literally is just a change in name of his title. It's it, the exact same role. And oh, yeah, it's, the actions enough, are the same. Doesn't change. Yeah, it's the same actions. Um, yeah, yeah. It just, it just sounds a little bit more professional when you go overseas. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so and we should try and get him on at some point. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else we need to promote. Um, go to rugbyleaguepodcastingnetwork.com. Go to nrlbreakingnews.com. More importantly, go to leaguefreak.com, where I've been writing about the game since Stanley Jean was a kid. So, yeah, and also go to rugbyleagueproject.org. I was going to say, does that mean that you're older than Stanley Jean? Man, it kind of makes it sound like it, hey. But no, I am not wow. older than Stanley Jean. I think that the only things that are older than Stanley Jean, you have to... Uh, do carbon dating on. Yeah. Or interview you. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Since he was no, a kid. It's like said. they do carbon dating on, on stuff, and then they say, do you remember this Stanley Jean? And he goes, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was, uh, that was pretty good when that was alive. Well, after all, you are a robot. Yeah, I can just... uh it existed uh, for years. Be around for forever, really, can't I? That's exactly right. See, I think, right. the, I think after all these years, people have thought, well, I should say years, episodes. Feels like yeah. years sometimes. Um, <laughs> done so many. I think a lot of people got this impression that you're human. Yeah, and I don't know why. I mean, I, I show no human emotions. Um, you know, I just sort of exist in this realm of ones and zeros. Everything to me is binary. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, good. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Also, check, yeah, check out my website. So you can go to my Patreon, uh, yeah. for www.patreon.com slash RL project. Make a monthly donation there. That would help. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, really. You can check us out on YouTube as well. Go over there and subscribe and like all the buttons. Oh, yeah, press all the thumbs up buttons on everything. Yeah, just everything that says like like, subscribe, notify, yeah. um, give it everything. Just just depress everything you can. Um, and the other thing is, go and check out Andrew's video that he put up about his rugby league history book library. It is fantastic to watch. It's got he goes through a lot of the books that he has, some of the rare rare ones and ones that he really enjoys uh, reading. So that was a fantastic video he put together. Yeah, it only took me about 19,000 goes to get it to a, a stage where I was fed up with recording them all the time, and I just stuck with the last one. <laughs> you should put up the first, like, 57 that you put together where it's like you said, okay, uh, ooh, okay, uh, these these are books. Um, they, and I got to the point where I'd say that I, I said the same thing all the way through, and then I get to the end and go, on, where's that other fucking book gone? Oh, oh really? Stop, start again. <laughs> <laughs> that's I finally did the perfect perfect version was the second last one. Yeah, and then I was as I sat down to put it on there, I saw one book on the table and went, ah, oh, because <laughs> that was the one book I loved the most, and it wasn't yeah. in there. And it was the Sean Fagan one. So oh, the, how can, uh, I, can I go through the whole library and not even have that there? So I went, I've got to do it again. Again, <laughs> maybe so. I should do a review of of like my hammer. Absolutely, you should. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. Kid, I'll, uh, what would I'll be good? I know, you, I know you won't do it. What would be good is you could um, go around just squashing things with it and talk about its its um, ability to squash certain things, like a Demtel ad. Yeah, what, on, yeah watch it, was... watch it, smash this tomato, thud, splat. Yeah. No, what I should do is do it like you know the the knife ads, the special knife ads, but just be like, look at the way that this hammer cuts through the tomato and just sl- just saw it while it's getting mushed. Under the weight of the hammer, because uh, my hammer's got some heft. Let me tell you, that is uh, that is one mighty hammer. I think it really we is. Definitely need a video for that. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try and put something together, um, and I'll have to think of some different sorts of. And in fact, here's a here's a deal. If you want to see the hammer interact with something, like if you've got something in mind. Just email us at podcast at com, and you can do like the subject can be like hammer and uh, just say like, oh, I'd like to see you use the hammer on this or that or whatever. And I'll see if I can incorporate some of your suggestions into a video. 
I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. I should try and do a video where obviously I'm not filming, but where I'm driving where like I use the hammer to change the the indicator on or something ridiculous. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Or just get angry in traffic and start using my hammer to press the horn. Could you imagine if you're in traffic and someone behind you bips you and you look in the rearview mirror and they've got a, a, a Thor's hammer out the window? That'd scare wow. the fuck out of me. Yeah, if someone beeps you, you just put your put your hand out the window with a, just put your hold it out outside the window and just hold yeah. it up like it's a, like it's an Olympic torch. Yeah, or you yell out the window, "Come on, I've got a storm to get to." Yeah, come at me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. That's a brilliant. So there you go. Get get on get on to that people. Send him freaky ideas of what he should do with his hammer. Yeah, and we'll read them out too. What what oh, I'll do? Absolutely, I'll, I'll do. I'll try and put together the video, but then we'll go through and read out your suggestions. So if you've got ones that can actually go on video, send them in as well. But if you've got some funny ones, send them in, and that'll be fun to read through. I think the best way to do it too is you need to make them, I think, part of something mundane. Like you're going out to get the mail, and the postman's what? there. You just go out and meet him at the front door, just holding the hammer in your hand. Hey, you going, mate? And just pretend I like there's to... nothing weird going on. I used to do a doorstop the other day, hey, and it's the coolest doorstop ever. Like you want to keep a door open and you just put down Thor's hammer and it's like, man, it is the coolest shit ever. It's how you, it's how you grit the pizza man when you need to open the door. Yeah. Just walk up and then open the door. I just go, hang on, I just got to put Thor's hammer down, keep the door open so I can grab exactly. these pizzas. Or you just, just let him let him know it's Thor's hammer, not just any hammer. No way they keep walking to the door if I do that. Like, if, exactly if you're open right. the door and you're holding a hammer like that, no way. They're, like, looking at you thinking, this is it. This is the one I was told about. The oh, crazy you know person, you know? When you get those people who come around door knocking, like salesmen and stuff like that, mm. just open the door and say, what do you want? And just be holding yeah. Thor's hammer on your shoulder. Do you reckon the religious ones would be uh, less inclined to try and convert me to their religion if that I would just be very door. interesting to see. It's like, man, it's you too late, man. I'm the god of thunder. I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> oh, that needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try and get some things happening. I've got some ideas already, so it'll got be the pretty juices good. flowing. Hey? Got the juices flowing. Yeah, the juice is always flowing here at uh, leaguefreak.com headquarters. Absolutely. All right, yeah. people. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Send in your suggestions for um, Freaky's Hammer. You can make that the hashtag Freaky's Hammer. Hashtag Freaky's and, uh, Hammer. Yeah, and we'll catch you in the next episode.